In today's video, what we're going to be looking at is the link between the world of the atom and the world that we live in, which is the laboratory. So things react at the atomic and molecular level where bonds are broken, bonds are formed, and so forth. But we have to measure things at the laboratory level, and those levels are pretty far apart. Um, so in order to do this, what we're going to do is a thought experiment. So if we were to take the equivalent numerically of what on the periodic table we have talked to about before is atomic mass units, that is the weighted average of all of the isotopes. If we took that numerical value and made the equivalence in grams, and then we counted. So we weigh out 12.011 grams of carbon and we count how many atoms there are. Now this is a thought experiment because this would take, oh, say 10 to the 14th years or something like that. What we would find is that we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So that's pretty interesting. Let's try another one and see what we come up with. Let's say we start with zinc. Now, in atomic mass units, the weighted average is 65.38. Now we're going to take the gram equivalent of that and we're going to count it. And lo and behold, we get 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of zinc. Okay, now that seems like quite the coincidence. I think we need to do it at least one more time to really convince ourselves. So let's go to xenon. I don't know why I like xenon. I think xenon's a fun element, a surprising element. And if we took the atomic mass unit from the periodic table and did the gram or mass equivalence, this is something we can deal with in the laboratory, and we counted it, again, this funky number shows up. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Now, this number is our conversion factor. You can really think of it as that, and it's much like a dozen. If we have one dozen, we have 12. Now, if we have a dozen cookies, we have 12 cookies. If we have a dozen students, we have 12 students. A dozen pieces of candy, well, you get the idea. A dozen is 12, and it's a convenient way uh, to represent a number that we use on a regular basis. Well, that's what we're going to do for this number here. It, uh, Avogadro came up with this number, and that number is what I like to call the heart of chemistry, and it's called the mole. So if I have one mole of anything, I could have a mole of electrons, I can have a mole of atoms, uh, I can have a mole of grains of sand, doesn't matter what I'm counting, just like a dozen, that one mole is always equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of whatever we're talking about. So I'm just gonna do particles. I think the key here is that the mole is a counting number, this 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and it gets us into the laboratory world of weighing. And more, it's, it truly is the heart of chemistry. And you will see mathematically, if we're going to see this in a math equation, it's given the symbol N mainly because the letter M was already used twice. So we had to come up with something better, and so N is the next letter. And so if you're going to see a formula, you'll see the letter N. Well, how big is this mole? Well, if we had a mole of watermelon seeds, that's larger than the moon. This is massive. Like I said, I counted in 10 seconds, I could count to about 44, and I did a quick calculation, and I was on the order of 10 to the 14th years to count a, mo uh, a mole. Okay, if we have that many blood cells, it's more than the blood cells that we would have in every human being. And yet, if we look at the atom and molecular level, 
it would be a five pound bag of sugar would have not one mole, but 6.6 .6 moles. So the mole is a very, very handy word um, term. It's going to be used all year. And we will see how we use this in calculations in a later video. Until then, take care.